What's up guys? These are my top pick mesh systems for 2024 from the ones that I've personally tested and I have tested a good amount of them. Not all of them, the most notable exceptions being I haven't tested the latest ASUS Wi-Fi 7 mesh systems yet and a couple others, but for the most part I have tested a good amount of them and these are the ones that left the most lasting impressions on me. Uh, now there are some others that I want to include in this list that I really, really like, and it was a very, very tough decision, but I wanted to make this list as short as possible. So we will compare them. I did speed test ranges for all of these with various Wi-Fi 6C and Wi-Fi 7 devices such as these. And you know, we'll go over the speed test, we'll go over the specs and everything like that. And I want to give you guys my opinion on basically which mesh system is good for what use case. So, cause we got, you know, starting from the Eero 6 Plus, which is the least expensive and working our way up to the most expensive Orbi 970, talking about just retail prices. So we're going to start off with the Eero 6 Plus, but just as a heads up, these are identical, just like almost all the other mesh systems in this review, minus the Orbi 970, which there's a physical difference in us. So I'll show you both units, but for this one, if you get this, you get it as a two pack and the one you hook up to your modem becomes a router. The secondary one becomes an access point or a satellite or an extender or a node, um, essentially. So, but physically both of these are actually routers. And again, the one you hook up to your modem becomes the main router and the other ones just kind of follow. Um, okay, so you have two auto sensing gigabit ports. You have the USB-C. Auto sensing just means that if you could pick your modem and hook it up to any one of these, it'll automatically figure it out. Essentially, you hook up your computer or hook up the other Eero to this and it'll automatically figure it out. USB-C powered and we have a factory reset right here on the bottom. And I did tape it to hide the info, but it's very sleek, nice. It also includes Zigbee and Thread, which none of the other ones uh, do. But if you want parental controls, it actually does require a separate subscription for that. Next, looking at the XC70 Pro, we got three auto sensing ports where one of them is actually 2.5 gigabits and the other two are gigabit ports. So if your internet speeds were two gigabits and you went in at 2.5, it would actually come out at gigabit speed. So you'd actually be capping your internet speeds via the ethernet devices because it'd be capped to gigabit speeds. However, if your internet speeds were up to gigabit, you could actually use one of the gigabit ports and then run your 2.5 to the other XC70 Pro's 2.5, and that would actually create a 2.5 gigabit LAN, which is not the same thing as 2.5 gigabit internet speeds, just as a heads up. Uh, we got the power port, and then on the bottom, we do have the factory reset, uh, and this is a pretty similar design that Deco has been using for a while. Next, we get to the ASUS GT6, and this thing looks awesome. In fact, these light up, and you could change the pattern and change the colors of these which makes it even more awesome. I really like the look of this thing. And ASUS took an easy approach and put a sticker on this that said, hi, I'm the main unit, start with me. However, technically both of them are routers just as a heads up. Um, so this one has dedicated ports. We have a 2.5 and three other gigabit ports. Uh, so just like the XC70 Pro, when you go in at 2.5, it's only gonna come out at gig. Now, if you go in at gig, it will come out at gig. Or if you go in at 500 megabits per second, it will come out at 500 megabits per second. But if you're expecting to get this and you have two gig internet or up to 2.5, if you go in, again, once it comes out, you are capped to gigabit speeds. You got the USB 3.0, if you guys wanna share your hard drive on the network, we got the power on and off, we got the power port, we got the little WPS button on the bottom, and we got the factory reset right here. So overall, really nice mesh system. Next, we move on to the Deco B63. It is slightly larger than the XC70 Pro. And starting with the Wi-Fi 7s, they started doing the Signature 7 look, which looks pretty cool. Deco on the front, WPS button. We got four 2.5 gigabit ports. They are auto sensing. You got a USB 3.0 if you want to share stuff. You got the power port. And on the bottom, we do have the reset right here. You got some cooling on the bottom as well. And again, I'm hiding the info right there. Um, yeah, very nice. Then we move on to the bigger brother, which is the B95. It's much larger. It still has that same look, except again, much larger. We got that little seven look going. WPS, four auto sensing ports. Now this time we actually have two 10 gig ports on it. And optionally, you can use either this 10 gig port or the 10 gig SFP plus port if you wanted to. And then you got the USB 3.0 and, and again the cool thing about this is because you have two of these when the internet comes in it can actually come out so this one can't handle my internet space USB 3.0 the power and then on the bottom just like with the other one we got some vents and we got the little reset so then we got the Orbi 970 this is the router and this is the satellite so we'll start off with the router first so this is obviously the one you must hook up to your modem we got the dedicated ports by the way so the 10 gig for the internet we got the 10 gig for your LAN so in my case uh, internet goes in at 5 
and comes out as 5, which is awesome. We got four other 2.5 gigabit ports. We got the factory weak side. We got the sink. We got the power. And it looks like you could mount this somehow. Um, so there are two holes you can thread, threaded holes, I guess. You could screw in something. Um, I haven't looked into that, but that is an option. And this thing is obviously very large. Um, it's essentially the largest one. It's bigger than the B95, and the B95 is already pretty big. Then we have the satellite, which looks pretty much identical to the router, as you guys could see. It's only from the back you could see the difference because it doesn't have as many ports. So we got the sync, the factory reset, we got two 2.5 gigabit ports, we got a 10 gig port, and we got the power. And then again, those two uh, threaded holes that I guess you could screw something in. I haven't really looked into that though. But yeah, again, big and beefy. So here's a quick glance at the power supply, starting with the Aero 6 Plus. If you guys see labels, it's because I labeled it. It's not because it comes labeled. Um, so this takes the least amount of power at 15 watts. I really like it because it's USB-C, where the rest of them are just regular, the, uh, the regular circle style uh, plugs. So then we get to the XT70 Pro, which takes 24 watts of power. And then we got the Asus, which is 45 watts of power. Then we got the B63, which takes 39.6 watts of power, which is exactly the same size and shape as the XT70 Pro, but it does take more power. And we got the BE95, which takes the most amount of power at 75 watts. And then we have the Orbi 970, which takes the second highest amount at 60 watts of power. So we're going to start off with the internet speed test. And as you guys already know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds, unless of course the router itself can't go that fast. So in my case, four of these will cap my speeds. So my internet speeds happen to be five gigabits per second upload and download. And only these two mesh systems can get me to those speeds with an ethernet connected device. These four will be limiting my speeds. The six plus will be limiting it to gigabit. So will the XC70 Pro and the GT6 because my internet speeds go in at five. This thing caps it to 2.5 immediately. And then when I come out of the ethernet to go to my computer, that port coming out caps it to gigabit speed. So therefore, when I do an internet speed test on these three, it's capped to gigabit speeds. With this one, it's capped to 2.5 gigabit speeds. And again, with these, I actually do get the full five gigs. Now the Wi-Fi devices are a different story. So looking at these numbers here, starting with the six plus, we got just under gigabit speeds. I mean, not quite there yet, but close enough, very good numbers. The XC70 Pro and the GT6 did better, especially with the GT6 because it has a higher speed rating. So it actually allows for a faster connection. The B63 went even faster, especially with the Wi-Fi 7 device, getting pretty close to those 2.5 speeds, not quite there, uh, but getting close enough. Wi-Fi 6E wasn't quite as fast with the B63, but still getting pretty good speeds overall. Uh, the B95 and the Orbi 970, that's when the download speeds, we actually got over 3 gigabits. So very, very fast overall with the Wi-Fi 7 devices. Not quite as fast for the upload, but still very, very fast. And then with the Wi-Fi 6E devices, the Orbi actually did the best. Uh, but still very, very good speeds. Not quite to those Wi-Fi 7 speeds, but very good speeds overall. Now to find the true performance of these mesh systems, I need to do a local speed test server. So I make my computer to the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer. In the case of wired and wireless backhaul, I go from Wi-Fi device to the secondary one, which then jumps to the primary one, which then goes to the server. So what this does is it isolates the mesh system itself because I'm no longer relying on my public speed test server, not my public, uh, no longer relying on the public speed test server, nor my internet speeds. So looking at these results for the single router configuration, we got some really, really good numbers for the Eero 6 Plus. We got better numbers overall for pretty much all of them. The XT70 Pro, the GT6, the B60, all of them pretty much got really, really good numbers. Now we jump into wired backhaul and pretty much most of the speeds were the same as the single router configuration with the exception of the XC70 Pro and the GT6. And again, because when the ethernet goes out, it's actually being capped to gigabit speeds. Therefore, now you could see that the XC70 Pro and the GT6 are pretty similar to the Eero 6 Plus in terms of speeds. Whereas the other mesh systems are still going very fast, just like they did in their single router configuration. And finally, for the local speed test, we get to wireless backhaul. And this is where you can see the biggest difference between the mesh systems. The 6 Plus is suffering the most. It is the slowest of the bunch. It is a dual band system with the slowest speed rating. So therefore, it's kind of to be expected. It's not quite as fast. Still getting very good numbers overall for something in its price range and considering it's a dual band, but still 
can't quite keep up with the rest. The GT6 is kind of outshining the rest in terms of the up to gigabit territory. But then when we go to Wi-Fi 7 land with the B63, B95, and the Orbi 970, it, it takes us up to a whole new level of speed. So the B63 did fantastic considering its price. The B95 pretty much blew everything out of the water, which is crazy, crazy fast. And then the Orbi 970 still got some very, very good speeds. Not quite keeping up with the B95. It is definitely faster than the B63 overall. Um, in most cases, I should say. Um, but really what took the cake was the B95. Next, we jump into range test, and this will vary drastically by location. So if you're in between floors, you have a lot of thick walls, if you, there's a lot of objects. Essentially, the more obstructions there are, typically the less range you're gonna get. The more of an open area you're in, typically the more range you're gonna get. But for me, all of these are tested in the same situation. So looking at these speeds, so at 20 feet away inside my place, we could see that some of them did drop, some of them dropped more than others. A Euro 6 Plus actually did very well for dropping the least. Uh, the B95 on the upload section dropped quite a bit, uh, but for the download section, not as big of a drop percentage wise, but all still doing very, very well, very usable. And then I go 50 feet outside my place. They're all still doing very, very well. Uh, very fast speeds again, even outside my place, both download and upload. And at a hundred feet, this is kind of when the Orbi 970 starts to shine, uh, because it is doing better than the rest. Granted, it did start very fast just like with the b95 but compared to the b95 it dropped less so and all of these in my place can actually pass 100 feet i just stopped my testing at 100 feet but overall genuinely speaking they all did fairly well with the orbi 970 taking the cake so to summarize i would recommend these three mesh systems for anyone with internet speeds of up to gigabit that's planning on using wired backhaul. If you're planning on using wireless backhaul, I would recommend these two, especially the GT6, because the GT6's wireless backhaul performance was almost as good as its wired backhaul performance. The XC70 Pro wasn't too far behind, though, uh, but the GT6 kind of took the cake. Now, even though the XC70 Pro and the GT6 have a 2.5 gigabit port, which means they can handle internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits, as soon as the Ethernet port comes out, because again, there's only one 2.5 on there, it's actually going to cap the speeds to gigabit, so I still recommend these three in the gigabit, uh, up to gigabit internet speeds territory. Um, up to 2.5 gigabits, I would recommend the B63. This thing is an absolute beast. Not as much of a beast as these two, but still an absolute beast. It has four 2.5 gigabit ports. It also has phenomenal wireless backhaul because it is a Wi-Fi 7 mesh system. It's, it's really, really good. I really like that one. Uh, and then we get to the beefy beast, <laughs> uh, which is the B95 and the RB970. And these can actually handle internet speeds of up to 10 gigabits. Now for me, because my internet speeds are five gigabits per second upload and download, I would actually only consider these two from this list that I uh, came up with. These are the only two that I would consider. Uh, between these two, the B95 did get better wireless backhaul speeds and the Orbi 970 got better range test speeds. Uh, the B95 is expensive, but it is less expensive than the Orbi 970. Uh, so keep that in mind. But let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. Which one do you guys prefer? Uh, and is the software important at all as well? Because from the software perspective, ASUS offers the most because it does include the parental controls and includes the protections. All of that stuff is included in the price. You do not need a separate subscription. Where with the rest of these, technically, you don't need the subscription, uh, but if you do want certain features, you actually it do need the subscription. If you Again, if you do need certain features that we did talk about um, during this review. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And as always, smash that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.